Something seems strange. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Netflix know-how, the review show here to help you stop browsing and start watching. Today, we have a very special review. I'm here with my good friend and roommate, Wes. Wes, say hi to everyone. Don't hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> and today, we're gonna be talking about Stranger Things Season 3. So, uh, Stranger Things Season 3, um, you watched it quite a while before I did, and I finally got around to it. I watched it kind of late. Um, what do you think of the season overall? What do you think? I thought, so I thought season three was my favorite of the seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was the best, but I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the other two seasons. Yeah, really? Okay. Like you, I don't think it was the best of the seasons. Probably the weakest one of all three of them. Um, but it was still a really good season. It wasn't my favorite season. Um, they did some things with it though that I did really enjoy. Uh, so before we get into the details, uh, you want to give a quick synopsis? No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Season 3 is The Blob meets Evasion of the Body Snatchers meets Oklahoma? Oklahoma! Yeah, so it's, uh, it's summertime now, so all of the, the seasons have kind of focused on sort of like a different theme or different holiday. Um, I know last season was centered in October, so everything was really spooky and Halloween-y, which I really loved because, you know, Halloween's my favorite holiday. Right. So I really like that. Uh, this one is centered um, around the summer. It's set during the 4th of July, that time of year. Um, so there's, you know, lots of bright colors. Everyone's outside. Um, the 80s theming is back. It's all really great. Um, what, what did you think of like the 80s theming in this particular season? Oh, the, the 80s theming was just, it was hilarious. All of the uh, the little nuances that they added in from the uh, Star Court big malls that they mm -hmm. were just coming out with. And, uh, oh man. Yeah, they, they went really deep this season. Uh, but yeah, so there's a mall, they have a new mall in town. And so a lot of the season centers around this new big mall and it just, the other, the other uh, two seasons, they, they really focused on the nostalgia in the 80s and stuff, but man, this one like really like sunk its teeth in in the 80s, man. Like the first episode, like just the soundtrack alone, like they were just like coming at you hard with the song choices. Like everything they picked was like so heavy handed and cheesy and campy, but it was like great. Like that sense of nostalgia was awesome. Uh, the shorts, man. You gotta talk the about shorts. the shorts. The shorts, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Did we really dress like that when we were kids? Because hey, I, I, you, I, I was born in 88. I, don't blame this on me, all right? You're older than me. That was, that oh, was all you guys. When you think of like the, the stereotypes of the 80s, like, you know, the crazy colors, the way people dress, the music, like the things people did for fun, like this was like stereotypical, like 80s America. Um, it was It was crazy. Uh, I, I loved it. I, I think this one like really really got that sort of nostalgia feel down way more than the other seasons. Um, almost to a fault in fact, like especially after the first episode, um, they were laying it on so thick with all this nostalgia that I was kind of like, uh, they might be going a little bit off the deep end, but um, thankfully they, they kind of reined it in after that first episode to like keep it in check. But um, well, and it didn't, but it didn't feel forced, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, like watching Captain Marvel, all of the references, the '90s references in Captain Marvel were forced. <laughs> they felt out of place. They didn't add right. anything. So, to so th that's a good example of uh, this is a good example of how to use nostalgia well versus how to use it poorly. So here in Stranger Things, they always use the nostalgia not as a way to kind of get us to watch and be like, oh, I recognize this. I recognize that but more it's just a way to like build the world and they built it in, into something that's very recognizable to us whereas in Captain Marvel the way they did it was like oh yeah I remember that I remember this and that none of it had anything to do with the world building or the story or the characters 
it's just like, oh, yep, that, that was the thing that happened. Um, not so in this show. Everything is very, you know, well put together. They, they clearly crafted a world and they wanted us to feel like this was a real place and, you know, a real town. And they've always been really good about that. Um, so, uh, why don't we talk about the characters? Well, I mean, Dusty felt gone for half the season. Um, uh, it, it was kind of really episode, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, they, they took the characters on different arcs. They were separated. You didn't really see them come together. Yeah. Um, so it, it was it was really nice to see the development. They're all hitting their teen years and starting teen angst. Yeah, puberty. Um, the puberty years. Yeah. Yeah, because... The, the most awkward years. <laughs> <laughs> it does... It, this season focuses a little bit more on the relationships mm -hmm. between the characters, uh, specifically uh, love relationships between the characters. Yeah. So so this one, they're, they're teenagers. You know, they're kind of becoming like young adults, adolescents here. And... Um, that basically means uh, all the characters are focused on one thing. The ladies, am I right? Ladies. How about them girls? Girls, girls, girls. Gotta, ah. gotta be ladies. We'll talk about Dustin more in a second. Cause Dustin's actually my favorite character. I don't know who your favorite character is, but it's, it's really hard to pick. It's really all, hard. It's they're really all hard such right good characters, and they um, continue that tradition in this season. Steve, I have to right now. So Steve started as my least favorite character out of all of them mm -hmm. that they introduced. And I hated him. Yeah. But by the end of this season, he had become probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, so you picked the other half of my of the dynamic duo. Right. right? Steve yep. and Dustin. Steve so and I Dustin. think Steve and Dustin are by far still the best characters. They had the best dynamic of anyone in this show. They're just so entertaining and I love them to pieces. But you're right. Steve was really unlikable and he's had a really good character arc. He went from being this like awful, miserable kind of like vain person to like he's just he's just a really cool dude um like he, he doesn't think of himself as like better than anyone else anymore he's, he's really awesome and then um D dustin oh god dustin <laughs> like <laughs> i swear to god I, the funny thing is like last season i don't think they meant to make a season kind of about dustin and the same thing here they didn't really me mean to make a season about dustin but it kind of but happened Dustin's about like, dustin yeah. he he steals the scene in every single scene. He's so funny and just charismatic and confident while still being just like so nerdy. He's so sure of himself in every way. Like um, all the other characters, especially this season, they're really insecure. They're worried about like their girlfriends and everything. And Dustin's just like, nah, man, I'm cool, bro. I built this cool radio tower. Want to check it out? I got a girlfriend who lives in Utah. Utah. Yeah, <laughs> Mormon girlfriend. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so Dustin's great, Steve's great. Um, there's uh, the other characters though, so everyone kind of has girlfriends in this season, it's all kind of about their relationships. And there's this running joke. So, um, you know, the first two seasons, Will kind of got the shaft. Um, you know, the first season. Well, he was gone. He was gone, he got stoned, season. he was stuck in the upside down. Season two, um, he got like, I don't know how you want Mind wants. control? He, yeah, he got like possessed, in, in possessed by the mind flare, flare, however you want to call it. Um, and so like this season is the first season he just gets to be like a normal kid again. And all the kid wants to do is go back to what he did before and just play some damn Dungeons and Dragons with his friends. But they're so obsessed with, with their girls. girls. It's just like, oh, but should I call them? Like, what do I need to do? Am I in trouble? Like, how, how do I what make are they saying? Up? Like, I'm just like, and Will's over here, just like, guys. I, I, I made a Gorgons. <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy, the cat, the poor just... kid cannot catch a break. And by the time, like, you know, his friends finally realize what dicks they're being, essentially. Uh, like bad stuff happens and he has they have to go back to saving the world so. save the world I know just poor will man. This is this kid just deserves a season where he doesn't have to do Like anything except be a kid and just be happy But on that note with the characters that actually kind of brings me um because as, as I mentioned um season three Not my favorite season. Um, I think like the other first two seasons they have their flaws, but they're pretty minimal uh, for the most part uh, this season I felt had some things it felt a little sloppier. It didn't feel quite as like fine-tuned as the first two seasons, which is weird because it took them a long time to get this one out, didn't it? Yeah, it was like a year and a half. Yeah, it took them yeah, longer to get longer. this one out than the previous uh, season. So um, I'm not sure what happened, um, but I kind of felt like the characters were just like not as well developed and their arcs just weren't as good or interesting this time. I think the only characters that had like really good, interesting character arcs this season were Dustin and Steve. 
And Robin. And Robin. Robin's Robin. the new character. We'll yep. talk about Robin in a second, because Robin is fantastic as well. Yep. Um, uh, but the rest of them, like, as we mentioned, most of the season is kind of, a lot of the season is about them kind of, like, working on their, like, angsty teenage emotions and stuff. They're, they're, they're going through puberty. Yeah, and which it, it felt really honest, great. and it felt genuine. But, but at the same time, there was so much emphasis put on it, and, like, you know, as adults, as someone, as an adult watching this show, it, it just felt like a bit much, and it kind of got to the point where I was just like, I really don't care anymore. about this. I don't. It was it was okay for the first, you know, two or three episodes, and then it just kept going for the entire length of the series. Yeah, just like stupid, stupid things. And eventually, yeah. they kind of had to set everything aside because um, because of you know everything that happens in the second half of the season, everything kind of like went to hell again. It explodes, basically, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> or uh, implodes. Fourth of July joke explodes. Explodes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm all about the bad jokes. <laughs> and so they, yeah, there's just so much focus on their relationships, and it's just so juvenile and dumb. And like, I get that. That like, I think that like you know, kids that age. If you think back to that that age, that's really how it is, right? You're just like you're obsessed with like stupid things, like girls, like oh my girlfriend didn't call me today, whatever, stupid right. crap like that. Uh, but there was just so much emphasis, and it just kind of got like irritating to me after. I'm like, come on, come on, let's get on with the, the important stuff here. Like, let's go somewhere with this. Um, and then I felt by the time that like they had to all kind of come together at the end. Um, it, it, it felt sort of like forced, like it wasn't earned. They weren't coming together because they had resolved their issues. They were coming together as like, well, if we don't, we're all, we're all dead. dead. So, yeah. Yeah, this, nope, absolutely. This, they, mm -hmm. the, 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 the reason they came together was not the, the best. Like, it, it, it felt like three very distinct stories that just are like, so, now we're gonna throw them back all into the pot. Yeah. And let that Which is happen. interesting yeah. because if you think about season two, they did the same thing where they separated the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so they all had kind of their own different storylines and arcs and stuff going on. But they were all, they all seemed like they had like a strong sense of direction and they also felt like they were connected somehow. So that way by the time they all came together at the end, it felt really fulfilling. Like, wow, like that, that was really crazy how that all worked out. Well, yeah, in season two, you could tell, like you had that knowing that there was that overlap there that each of the, each of them were figuring out their own piece of the puzzle, but it was all part of the same puzzle. Season three feels like they're all working on their own puzzles. And yeah, which is funny because it's still part of the same puzzle. But, but like, it, but yeah. they all basically find out the same crap kind of around the same time. Yeah, they all kind of like figure sources. out the puzzle at the same time, and then you're just kind of waiting around for them to finally like all reunite so they can face the thing together. And it's just like, it just it didn't work as well for me. It wasn't bad. It just, especially compared to the first two seasons, it just didn't feel quite as like well put together the story as. Um, you know the first two seasons did the overall plot of the story i felt was a little um don't want to say stolen but it did feel like it was reused um the first two mm -hmm. seasons ve felt very unique um you know in dealing with their own little things mm -hmm. uh well and then big things in, in the case of the mind flare but season three it really did feel like invasion of the body snatchers meets the blob meets huh. maybe silver yeah. bullet i kind of felt like it was weird. It almost felt like they had run out of ideas this season. And like they were just kind of treading water and like revisiting the same stuff that they've done before. Which is really unfortunate because- Yeah, I, this is what, actually I, I'm glad I kind of got more time to think about this because the more I thought about it, the more I realized like this, this season, it, the story is actually just kind of like bad. Like it's just lazy almost in a show we've, with multiple seasons. Uh, that has like a, a story like this, a serialized show, you need to, every time you have a new season, ideally it should build off of the things that happened from the previous season, right? In a, a sort of a, a meaningful and impactful way. And they did that with season two. Whereas this season, the way it starts is just like, how do we get the upside down to come back to them? How do, how do we get the mind flare to come back to them? Because like the, the portal's been sealed, right? And, the, and I think all they said was like, what if someone just opens it again? And it's like, okay, that's why? cool. <laughs> yeah, they didn't explain why. Either. At all, ever. Yeah, like it's not explained why the portal was reopened. 
and the, the people who are doing it, I don't know why it had to be them. Spoiler, it's not really a spoiler. It happens in like the first five minutes of the first episode. It's the Russians. It's the Russians! It's the Russians! It's always the Russians! It's the why Russians! Why would it be anybody else? And I mean, I get it. It's the 80s, the Cold War, communism, all that fun stuff. And especially now in our current political climate, I could see how that'd be relevant. But they don't justify why the Russians are trying to like seek this portal to the upside down. They just do it because they're bad. They also don't explain how apparently hundreds of Russians who don't speak English managed to hide out in Hawkins, Indiana without anybody knowing. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just very, <laughs> they just, I, it's, it's like they started writing the script and they're just like, Russians, <laughs> like that's where they stopped. <laughs> yep. It's, and then, yep. Like, now back to the main characters. Okay, uh, sure. So that, that part <laughs> was really not doing it for me. There were some really funny moments because of the Russians, like the whole di the interactions, but oh, yes, um, there's there's one character, what the heck was his name? Shmirnov? Shmirnov, Shmirnov, Shmirnov. <laughs> he was great. Um, I liked him a lot. He was a great character. There was Robin too. So let's talk about Robin. We kind of skipped over Robin. Oh yeah, Robin. That. Yeah, so she her, she comes off as yeah. a super grumpy, just out of high school, working minimum wage, having to deal with mm -hmm. Lucas's annoying little sister mm -hmm. on a daily basis. <laughs> I feel very sorry for um, God, Lucas's sister. She's, and, she's another character that got more time this season. <laughs> My God. Keep you. Um, but yeah, she didn't. Uh, like she didn't come off initially as very charismatic or what she was really kind of annoying, just kind of fed up with Steve and his mm -hmm. immaculate hitting yeah. ladies. She, all the she time. was very like sarcastic and she rolled her eyes a lot, a very dry, sort of a dry character at the beginning. Um, and she stuck, she stayed that way, but. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but, but she comes like she. Eventually has a really unique skill that is able to help out uh, the the trio, the Dustin and Steve, and their quest. You know what her unique skill is? That she's smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's good with languages, right? She's, she's good. She's well, got a good like ear. The, the, she's good the, with languages. languages. But like, she's but, yeah. she's like really really smart. Um, I there was actually one point uh, where I like decided that I really liked her. There's a moth over there. She was great. Uh, she's very witty and sarcastic, and she has a really dry sense of humor. But she is like, she is a firecracker, man. She's she's great, mm -hmm. and she added a very unique uh, kind of like levelness to Steve. Uh, brought him back down to earth and reminded him that yeah. uh, he's not as good as he used to be. Yeah, but you know who had to come swoop in and like slap some sense into him first? Dusty. Dustin. Dusty. Dusty. <laughs> had to just come and be like, what are you doing, man? You got this beautiful girl right here. It's kind of funny. So like the dynamic duo has now become like a dynamic trio. Yeah. Kind of. And um, it, what's really funny is now that Robin's like part of their crew, um, Steve's kind of like the dumb one. <laughs> well, the very dumb one. He's not. He's super dumb. He's not bright. He's <laughs> not a bright kid. And they actually do kind of talk about that a little bit in this season. Um, like his uh, grades and, and how he his, made it through his, school his because he was an athlete. And, and, yeah, so um, which is kind of sad, but you know it it's happens. True. It yeah, happens, it happens but, all the time. Oh, we haven't talked at all about uh, like uh, what's his name? Billy. 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 This is this Max's is, brother. This is Billy season. Oh, this is really it is, Billy season. It was amazing. Um, not not in like and it's it's sad too. It is what happens to him. So Billy, you know, after Billy was introduced in season two, he quickly became probably everybody's yeah. like anti. Let's, let's like not get into too too much details about what happens to him because that's pretty heavy spoiler. Right, theory, but but, let's, but yeah, season three does a really great job of making you empathize with Billy. Yeah, and they they it he he becomes you know a person who was molded by his past um, and not uh, you know. He he's he's, not, of his he's not just a jerk because he feels like being a jerk. Like he's a, he's the way he is because of things that happened to him in the past. And like he's lived a pretty rough life. Like I feel bad for the guy. Um, and I really appreciated that. Like they expanded his character and they kind of delved more into that this season. Cause like they touched on it a little bit last season. Briefly. And, and that was like the, that. There was like one episode where they touched on that, and that's that was kind of the was, scene where we it. realized like, oh, Billy's like. He's not a bad dude. He's just he comes from like a really bad, really bad home and yeah. a bad past, and so like a lot of the things he does are kind of like defense mechanisms and coping mechanisms. And there's there's going uh, to be a lot of people that identify with Billy and understand yeah. like where he's coming from. Yeah. My only critique, and like I love that they kind of made the season about Billy and they gave him a really big role in the season, is that 
he spends a lot of the season like not really as Billy. <laughs> and <laughs> basically I, I don't feel like they developed him enough and they gave like his history and his story enough time prior to, to what yeah was going to, on. to like really make it hit as hard as they should and it didn't have to be prior it could they could have done it more throughout the season because this was Billy's season right you know this should have been a season it, it, a lot of it was about him but they just they didn't go as far as I wanted to because of what was happening with him so I understood but I feel like they should have they should, they should have like shown more of his struggle and what he was like going through mentally right because what we saw a lot of it was external. Right. And like, yeah. so it was all insinuated what was going on, like inside of his head and everything and how he was feeling and what he was going through. But we didn't like really get to experience that. And so then like at the end of the season, uh, like, you know, some bad, some crazy bad stuff like happens at the end of the season. And because it just, he wasn't as fleshed out as he should have been. It just didn't like resonate, emotionally resonate with me as much as I think they were going for Cause they, they should have, you know? And it just, it didn't quite hit the mark for me. And that goes back to the thing about the season just feeling kind of sloppy. And thrown together. And like, they, they just kind of, like, missed the mark on some really key things. And it was so sad because they're so good at developing the characters. Even little characters. They, like, turned into, like, these really big things. Like, uh, remember, was it, like, Bob? Bob from last season? Bob, oh, yeah, the Sean... Uh, uh, Sean Astin. Sean Astin. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Um, like, I know, remember the first time I saw him, I was like, oh, he's just gonna be like an annoying throwaway character. Oh my god, Heck so no! Bad. He was the best character that season! Yeah. They killed him! So sad. They I, they do I that a lot. I'm tail right now, because they, they did that. They like, don't, flip they the don't... table. <sighs> well, the so one thing Stranger Things has never shied away from is killing people. I felt like season three was a little excessive. We'll just leave it with, at that. With the... With the killing. The deaths. With the deaths. You really, there weren't? Oh, you mean just like the, the body count? Yeah, the body count. Ah, right. Because Stranger Things is it's been, it's kind of like a pseudo horror show, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of like a horror show. And so the first uh, two seasons, this is probably gonna be the, the biggest critique I give of the this season. The first two seasons were scary. They were like creepy and scary and there was like a lot of mystery and um, I think that it definitely kind of tapped a little bit into the Lovecraftian like cosmic horror thing, which is notoriously difficult to really capture on film and on camera because cosmic horror, the whole idea behind it is that it's something so terrifying and horrific that if you were ever presented with it, if you were to ever witness it or see it, it would drive you insane, right? So then when you get to a medium like this, where it's purely visual, or it's, it's visual, you Mostly can actually visual, see things. Yeah. How do you portray that cosmic horror of like something that is so truly terrifying and horrific that we can't even begin to fathom like it's, you know, terribleness, right? Um, and so Season even though- get, did a good job of that. Yeah, and so even though there, there's like physical monsters like the Demogorgons and the dogs and the Mind Flayer and stuff, um, the, real, the where the cosmic horror comes in is like the mystery of it and the the mystery of the upside down specifically um, And even the mind flare so like we the last season we got to meet the mind flare And it's like it's this big hulking shadowy monster. That's like five it, times the size Yeah, of the and town, it, it like right? has a physical shape, but like it's also insinuated. That's not really what it is, right? It's it could just be the entire upside it's down something. Too. Yeah, it's something even more you know, terrifying, more horrific. So yeah, like the first two seasons, they were scary. You know, not, maybe not like true, true horror shows, but they were scary. They like had this sense of like mystery and suspense. And like there were parts where I was genuinely like, you know, biting my nails like, oh man, this is messed up. And then this season happened and it's not. I didn't no. think it was scary at all. No, it wasn't. Um, it was definitely a lot, it was, it was a lot funnier. The scariest thing that I thought that this season had mm -hmm. was kind of a throwaway homage to slasher flicks slash frighteners. Very kind of empty hospital Vibes. Oh, the the hospital the episode. The hospital episode. Yeah, that episode, and the especially the way that the episode before that, the way it ended. Uh, that was actually some some really creepy, spooky stuff. Um, and I, I did like that. That was like uh, made your skin crawl a little bit. Mm -hmm. But overall, I didn't think the season like was scary and had any like element of mystery or suspense really. And I think part of the problem was was that they like gave the mind flare like a 
physical form this time. Yeah. So it's no longer a mystery. Now it's just like a thing. And I feel like it was it was almost given as exposition at the beginning of the season instead of allowing you to try to develop this and and figure it out through the course of the season. You knew what was going on from episode two. Yeah. Episode one, you really don't know what's going on because it's the first episode. Yeah, so like you figure out pretty quickly like what's going on and eventually what they're going to have to do at the end, uh, like what they're gonna have to fight. So there's no like suspense that way. I mean, it did, every episode did leave on a cliffhanger and it kind of made you want to watch more and more. But like the first two seasons, um, I like, I binged them. I just like beginning to end binged them. And it wasn't because I enjoy binge watching. I'm actually really bad at that. Uh, little known secret about me guys, person who runs a YouTube channel that reviews stuff on Netflix about binging. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm a really bad binge watcher guys. I suck at binge watching. I can watch a few episodes of something, but after, you know, a few hours, I gotta go do something else because I'm just like done. I'm just worn out. But the first two seasons, I binge watched because at the end of every episode, I was so like just immersed in the story and the characters and what they were doing and everything and the whole mystery of the upside down and what was gonna happen that I had to keep watching. I, I physically could not stop. I was like, I, I have to keep watching right now. I, it's If I go to bed or if I go do something else, it's gonna be bugging me like what's gonna happen, right? Whereas this season, I didn't get that ever. Like every episode ended and I was like, all right, well something's gonna happen and then I'd go do something else, but I wasn't like like dying to see the next episode. I know you're a little different on this. I do, so yeah, uh, the first, oh, how many episodes were there? There's eight. eight. There's eight. Episodes. Yeah, so the first four episodes, I actually just watched one a day um, because I really didn't feel like I needed to. Like they ended on some kind of cliffhanger, but it really didn't feel. Yeah, from, it didn't propel you to watch the next episode. The next right? episodes. The last four episodes, for me anyway, were, entirely engrossing. I sat down with the intention of watching one. I started at about nine o'clock at night. I had to work the next morning. I ended up finishing the other three episodes along with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good responsible decisions there, buddy. And it, it, it did feel more like because the beginning of this season was so kind of lackluster that the the last half of yeah. the season, even though the last half of the season was really good, yeah. the whole thing just felt. It good. took it took a little bit for things to get rolling. It it, it definitely took a while because, and I think part of the problem was like there was such a big tonal sh tonal shift from last season to this season that they had to spend a lot of time kind of like establishing things, and it just I kind of think it threw off the whole game. Um, I, I kind of almost feel like they they I wish they hadn't like delved so deep into like the happy summer fun time theme. Like right. I still have that going, but not be like be so deep into it that you lose like the core tone of the show. Because in some ways, this kind of felt like a completely different show this season. It did, yeah, because it was which was good and bad. It was summertime. Time. Everybody had had six months, mm -hmm. you know, from any major world-ending disasters, and they're just trying to live their lives. But it did it created a tone for the movie that, or for the series that was kind of in contrast to everything else that has been Yeah, created. it's kind of like when a musical artist or a band, whoever, you know, they have a certain style, right? And so their fans, they expect have certain expectations. And then let's say this band or musician, they decide to, they want to change things up. Like quite, they want just want to change things up. They want to try something new. And you get- And there's, there's a fine line you have to walk between like doing something different, but still being recognizable and just doing something different to the point where like you alienate your base. Or right? you end up as an artist formerly known as Prince. Exactly, right? <laughs> like you just, you know what I mean, right? And so yeah. it felt like they, they were trying to do something different, which I do appreciate, but I think they just, they went a little too far over that line to the point where it was like, it's just, it doesn't feel the same. Well, yeah, it, didn't, like, it doesn't feel like the same show. It, it would, like I said, it was it was good. It didn't feel like the first two seasons mm -hmm. um, in, in that kind of, aspect it didn't feel like Stranger Things. You know who we haven't, what characters we haven't talked about at all? Uh, Will's mom, Hopper, L, 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 L L11. Fine. L's fine, she's fine this evening. Yeah, she's, she's, she, she's no her, weird sister arcs. In yeah. fact, her sister's still she, not She's her general, people. like, awkward, doesn't know how to, like, people self. Uh, yeah, she, she has a really good episode with uh, Max. I, like, I liked her episode. Her all. episode with Max was yeah, super, super funny and that's cute. Great. I liked that a lot. Girl bonding time. Girl bonding time. Um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> Hop and Joyce. Joyce. Yeah. yeah. Will's mom. Yeah, Hop and Joyce. Um, we haven't talked about them yet. 
and I've been and I, I've been meaning to bring them up, but I've kind of noticed as we've been talking about this, the reason we haven't brought them up is because they're not actually that interesting this season. No, they're no, really not. not at all. And in fact, and this kind of go ties into the whole of the series feeling different from the first two seasons. Um, they did something to Hopper that. Like they 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 did something with his character, and I feel like they changed it to the point where it no longer feels like him. At least not for like the first half of the series. He just feels like a completely different character. In yeah, the the and, and he, you're right. It He's does. like paranoid and insecure and like lonely and desperate. He's just like it's not the Hopper that we know. He's a Tinder date that you show up to a to meet and you walk away. That's that's good way of putting it. It's a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> what the heck happened to him in between seasons? So that's what I don't understand. It's like... All he had to do was help take care of Eleven. Yeah, it's just... It's weird, his character. He gets better in the second half of the season. Much better. Yeah, it's, it, because I, it, they he kind of like sort of remembers like who he is, and he gets doing into stuff that kind of like defines him, I think. Um, sort of that like brash, like cockiness and arrogance and just like you know, just, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do the right thing no matter what it takes. At the end of the season, what they did with this character, I don't know if what they did with him was necessarily earned either. It didn't feel great. No. I was just, felt... I was kind of like underwhelmed with it. I was like, really? That That's how this is gonna happen? Okay. Yeah, it, it definitely did not feel, and, and, you know, there was supposed to be a choice that was having to be made. And the choice didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel. Yeah, you, you gotta you gotta earn your big choices, people. You gotta earn your big moments. Um, so, you know, you you can't just like have a movie moment. You know what I'm talking about with a movie moment? Like movie those moment. scenes where it's like it's supposed to be this big emotional thing. You can't just throw that in there without having the prerequisite build up to it. Um, if you don't do any of that, it's just gonna fall flat. And if you only do some of it, people are gonna recognize what you were trying to do, but it's just it's not gonna feel good they're gonna be like that it's gonna feel cheap right you know well and they're the build-up that they had created or they tried to create for uh for joyce and hopper it just didn't do anything oh man talk about blue balling the audience there oh my god it was so the blue bad. balls so oh my god they're teasing us and teasing us the whole season was was something uh between joyce and hopper and he yeah, yeah. No, nothing <laughs> so much of that, right? Yep. It was messy. This was kind of a messy season. Um, it didn't. It didn't so feel like on. tight. It didn't feel as tight or as polished as uh, the first two, which is weird to me because, from what I'm aware, um, I think the fourth season might be the last one. Yeah, because they're they not. They, they have no intention. The, well, yeah, they said it was either four or five, but I think right yeah. now four is their plan. They're yeah. they're planning on ending the whole thing after four. Uh, I, I, I read an interview where the director's the director or the writer said that they can't justify continuing to put these kids through all of this crap that they're having yeah. to go through so, so every like, year. My, I thought that like the, they were only going to have like a, a, have it be a few seasons because they had like a story in mind and they knew how it was going to end. Which oh, those are the best kinds of shows, by the way. The best shows are the ones that don't necessarily have long show runs, but where the creators and writers and people involved have a definitive story and they know where it's going from the beginning to the end. Because then when it ends, it ends well. Um, and so I thought that was the case here. I thought they had like an end in mind, but after seeing the season, I'm kind of like, I don't know, because in some ways it felt like they were, like they were out of ideas. Well, it, it, it really felt like season two was their end that they had originally had in mind. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we're making you do a season three. So even though we had problems with the with this particular season, it's not like a perfect season. He said it's still been his favorite season. Even it was. He openly admits it's not the best season. Not the best, but it was my favorite. I and, enjoyed it. Yeah. And I don't. it's neither the best season nor my favorite season to me, but it's still a really good season. And the, the really the big saving grace of it is because of how great all the characters are. Yeah. So overall, uh, it was a good season. Not a great season. It had some flaws. Um, but uh, if you if you like Stranger Things one and two, you're gonna like Stranger Things three. I recommend it. It's probably my all time favorite series, hands down. Just ever? Ever right now? Really? Wow. Yeah. That's that's pretty high. I praise. love. You know, and I love my anime. I love. Mm -hmm. You know, my sitcoms. I love Star Trek, but yeah. Stranger Things has got to be the best best series I've ever watched. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Yeah, go watch it. It's good stuff. Um, you know, check it out. Season three, still a good season. You're going to enjoy it. Um, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. 
Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you that check out this channel. Um, so, Stranger Things Season 3, good stuff. Not the best stuff, but still really good stuff. Um, I want to thank uh, my lovely co-host today, Wes. Weston is his full name, in case you were wondering. As you can see, we uh, I have a slightly different setup here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I moved a few months ago. Uh, finally, so that's been a whole process, been a lot to deal with. Um, and then I've been away since February, I think it was. I've been away for a while. So I, I really apologize that it's taken me so long to get uh, back in the groove of making these, um, but I'm so glad to be back. I do want to continue making these videos, bringing these reviews to you, um, creating this content and, uh, you know, just giving you entertainment for all the things that you come here for. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I thank you so much for uh, tuning in to my channel and watching my reviews. I've been at this for a few years now and I want to continue doing this for a really long time. So uh, really, I do appreciate all of your support. Um, if you're interested, you can always hit that like and subscribe button down below, subscribe to my channel. You can also check me out on Twitter and Facebook. I have pages over there. Um, do you have any last words before we sign out here, Wes? He's a great guy. Check out his videos. Don't lie to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. And as always, if you want to know your flicks, you know where to click. Bye, guys. I'll see you all next time. Uh, where I, like, decided that I really liked her. There's a moth over there. We have a fly in here, too. Lovely. <laughs> it's gonna fly in front of the camera no no all right stay stay put just get tangled up and stay over there do we want to go catch it no okay i'm too lazy <laughs> <laughs> it's fine it's fine How it's fine moth get fine stranger you? things that's what we're talking stranger, about right? stranger <laughs> things yeah um, big ass that's a big ass moth big it's big ass moth. big uh so um there was a part where we found out that she's a theater kid